find this I'm accepted. Then I suggest you walk out without noise. I don't mind. I know that real slap and just laughing at the moment all over again. Slogans. God say, Kaho, man, 
हम हिंदू हैं मुसलमानों को दोष था हिंदुस्तान और कब्रस्ता थर्ड स्लोगन आई कॉन्ट रिमेंबर दिस देख मी आंसर देश को गद्दारों को गोली मारो साले को इफ यू टेक देश से इवेंट्स स्लोगन टुगेदर यू बिगिन टू गेट अ पिक्चर इमार्ट हिंसा इज समथिंग ऑन दिस टेक देयर मे बी लव डाउट अबाउट लव There is no doubt about himself. You know it when you feel. When he or she feels himself, he or she knows for certain. And the RSS scholar consciously knows. They. Trained in the doctrine of force, and they they know which targets to focus the violence on. It's a conscious decision, not blind decision. but concentrated is now for the second test the ambedkar test first of all let me mention that india has a word inclusive in the title uh if i remember right indian national developing inclusive alliance the sanghoya does not play this their politics is ideologically and openly quite different they they have the equate the indian nation with the hindu nation ms golwalka clearly did that we have had Mohan Bharat recently saying that all Indians are Hindu. They have always been called Hindu. Not true. Uh, Hindus and Muslims. These two terms go back to the Arab occupation of Sin and. Hindu is a name given by the Muslims to the in indigenous inhabitants of India. I mean, Hindu is a Muslim name, <coughs> and if Mr. 
Mohan Bhagwa thinks that <coughs> Christians and Muslims will grandly accept his offer of including them in Hindu, they simply will not believe them. Let's come to the I debate on the on the uh, inclusive exclusive problem. In debating on this matter between inclusive and exclusive, the Sanskrit law have accused the opponents of preferring to pay to pay, breaking India into fragments. I think that the danger lies in the opposing the opposite direction is where the danger lies. Because India will become to pay to pay only when we try to forcibly centralize and Hinduize the nation. The Muslims, Christians, even Sikhs will not accept it. But I warn you, the danger is coming. As against that, the opposition has recently come up with more effective slogans than before. Uh, the India, INDIA has adopted the slogan, Bharat, Europe, Bharat, Bharat, Jurega. Jurega Bharat, Jitega India. This is a follow up of the earlier Yatra slogan of Rahul Gandhi. Joro Bharat Joro, which he poses against uh, Bharat Toro. Now, this is a matter of opinion. And we cannot reach agreement about this. Now let me come to the historical text to probe the matter further. From this point on, the matter becomes technical. So, from this point on, I will read from the text and this will also 
legitimately sparing from my silence and my lapses of memory. The two alliances at war are India and India may, may not fit exactly with karma and adharma. A historical look into the development of the idea of India may give the insight into the rights and wrongs of the present confrontation. The contentions about the name of the country may be a point to start with. To the BJP, Bharat is the indigenous and older name, and India a foreign and recent one. Can you hear me at the back? Bharat is a Puranic name, no earlier than the 5th century. See, 7 centuries earlier, Portugal's inscriptions had referred to the land as Yamudvipa. Respect for the Shramanas and the Brahmanas everywhere distinguished. Yamudvipa from other countries according to Akrotham. Even earlier than that, the country, as far as known in neighboring Iran, then Of India. One is reminded of the Azar 
in progress. As sailors had identified past sin China and Al in India, as the as two distinct countries. culture traveled in the river valley, traveled to the river valleys and islands of Southeast Asia. This was a movement separate from the Chinese conquest and settlement in other islands and valleys of Southeast Asia. Now, surprisingly, the inhabitants of India, in had no collective name for themselves at this time. When they wanted to refer to the entire society, they mentioned the four varnas together. Brahman, Kshatriya, Aitya, Shunda. Do you need this? Can I do without this? No. Acoustic session. Just listen to the deeper. Is this better? Or is this better? century, the Hindus 
began to refer to themselves by the Muslim poem name of Hindu. That's the 15th century. And it is a, it is a Muslim name. The composite civilization displayed amazing variety in commonality. Emerged out of these rapture and reconciliation. With the advent of the West under British rule, an elite modernity fostered by the introduction of English education brought in a liberal mindset, trusting this universal value of reason and justice. Out of this past, the poet Ramindana exploit, expected this vast sea of in, Indian humanity would give and take mingle and march, and no one would be turned back. Beloved, give it, give it or give it. Javinna Kiri. The emergence of Indian nationalism, initially based on the English-speaking elite of the colonial fourth city, took place in the Indian National Congress. It was a broad alliance of all the com communities belonging to the educated middle class of Bombay, Pune, Madras, and Kata. That is what the origin of the Congress. At this time, let me add, uh, the concept of the Indian nation, though known in Bombay and Calcutta, was not much known in what is the UK tradition. <laughs> in today's terms, the political space created by the cosmopolitan secular nationalism of the established provides a provides a space which INDIMSP for itself. The vernacular culture of the North while India INDI lays a plausible claim to the composite nationalism of a continuing power, the Sankariva, 
which took no part in the freedom struggle, rejects that secular liberal heritage. Not only that, characteristically, Hindu thought, Hindu thought lays no claim to the ecumenical religious humanism of the Indian civilization of South and South Asia. The Sankhara is intent on one overriding object. Capturing the Indian state, not the Indian culture or the liberalism of the Indian nation. Vinayak Damodar Savarkar, the revolutionary leader before he became an ideological spokesman of Hindu thought had been a patronage and an almad of the Sikhoi war and the Hindu-Muslim unity of 1857. Significantly, Hindu thought found no roots in the Swaraj and Swadharma Savarkar extolled in his work on India's first war of independence. He just disappeared out of the sight, the Sikhoi war. The simultaneous unfurling of the green flag of the Muslim Muhammad and the white flag of the Hindus. <coughs> Mahavir Chanda is now anathema to the ISIS. The Muslim Hindu Ek, Ram Rahim Ek, Sri Krishna Allah Ek. These 1857 slogans ring no bell with the Karseva who are busy building the Ram Janan Bhumi temple over the demolished Bhakti Masjid. The single saffron flag of 1992 has displaced the twin green and white flag of 1857. Rovindranath had earlier used the term Hindutva, but in, a, in quite a different sense. The ISS's Hindutva is a malignant growth on the body quality, which, which sprang up sui generis, with no precedent in India's past. The Raya and the Hamira, the Indian kings and the Muslim nobility, they fought frequent war, but there was nothing like today's mass programs and today's popular violence. How did the idea, ideology of hatred take hold of a composite civilization of so many centuries? 
non survives in the long term centralization of power and the mechanization of politics. The dangers of which have been stressed by both Gandhi and Tagore. One danger lurking below the expanding system of representation in late colonial India was majoritarianism. The, in, the huge inland community of Hindi, Hindu, Hindustan had not been much involved in the central politics of the English-speaking nationalist elite. Before Gandhi pulled the agrarian interior in, politicians in UP had been immersed in local and communal bodies such as cow protection societies and Nagri Totalini Sabhavs. The Gaurakshani Sabhavs were outright communal. October, the Nagri Totalini Sabhavs, because they wanted to substitute from the Hindi script the Dev Nagri script. All that emerged. All that changed as the Congress moved inland from the coast. A process climaxing with the decisive Congress victory in the UP elections of 1937, with the advent of independence, the triumphant Congress set about building a nation-state of much broader social scope, a process involving unprecedented centralization and widening of state power. The power to transform, however, might transmute into the power to mangle and malform the demolition of the Babu Muslim signal the passing of political and electoral support from the Congress to the BJP in the Hindu heartland. The rule of the westernized liberal elite had produced the pent <coughs> up resentment of the Hindi speaking Saab elite. Due to an unforeseen popular Hindu reaction, RSS came into possession of the instruments of altering the social formation altogether. The sun, the sun set about realizing the idea of Hindu Rapture. The growth of Hindu majoritarianism derived its success from the demographic weight of the overpopulated heart there. The RSS did not hurry, but did not relent in the implementation of its program. The earlier Bajpai regime, while allowing Modi's massacre of Muslims in Gujarat did not conspire against the constitution of India. 
the Modi regime does precisely that. Andalan and Andalan and undeclared, deceitful and murderous emergence. A menace to the liberty of every citizen of India and the lives of all the minorities ranging from the coast of Mudra to the hills of Manipur. We are groping in the midst of the longest and darkest night of Mother India. I wish to end up by telling you about the class of 1992 here. They took out a procession in protest against the demolition of the Babli Bhakti. They turned left at the college gate, went around college gate and turned left again to Harrison Road. Reaching Central Avenue, they, they turned with the gate and finally they reached College Street again by the side of the Calcutta University South Side. Now, they started a number of slogans and these slogans reminded me of both the Azadin Pauk and the Ram Charit Man. To put it in verse, Kalam Kalam Barosa Bhindvi, Hindu Muslim Sikh Isari, Hindustan Hai Sakkur Dham, Ishwara Allah, Hazar Bhagavan. Thank you.
three positions are rarefied in India. One is secularism, another is interreligious faith and interfaith, and the third is narrow majoritarian. Does that answer the yes.
various heads of these religious denominations to kind of make their voice felt at the national political platform. Like some kind of a thing to kind of show that we have an alternative discourse at hand as opposed to your kind of performative brand of politics. Can that be a, yeah, I was wondering. Because we are not seeing that. So. You are seeking an effective answer to the BJP propaganda. <laughs> Depends on emotion, yeah. not on calculation. <laughs> and if we pursue the matter of inclusiveness and exclusiveness systematically, then that may be a more promising uh, line to take than other possible lines. Also, we have to make the people conscious of their emotions. I mean, in every heart, there is a conscience which which works up, which is terrified and mortified by violence, even if you are doing it yourself. And this emotion of asking, also needs to be exploited. I think that Rahul Gandhi's yatra partly affected this emotional uh, transformation, not just the inclusiveness, exclusiveness argument. Thank you, sir, for your insights. Can we have the next question, please? Thank you, Professor Roy. Uh, thank you for being our teacher at Presidency. And I still remember the humor and wit that we witnessed in your classes, and it's ever shining. Uh, so, uh, sir, I just wanted to know, uh, or it might be an uh, added question to the previous uh, uh, person, is that you talked about the looming dangers, and we can see it happening. We can see teachers uh, being, uh, you know, jeopardized for writing papers at universities like Ashoka and others. So, what do you think is your way out from this looming danger? I mean, uh, how should we keep our spines straight? Thank you, sir. <coughs> I did not quite understand the question. Were you saying that how can we break out of the media and reach a wider populace? No, sir. I wanted to know whether uh, the, whether we should be uh, you know scared about what is happening in our country, or whether we should stand straight and uh, I mean, as your students, like uh, I mean, we should be you know talk and we should be more vocal about these dangers that we are seeing. These I mean, under the NDA regime, we can't call it a danger at all. In fact, I, I heard someone, I mean, I overheard someone that because of this mic thing that was happening, somebody told that whether this is a conspiracy of the NDA. I mean, <laughs> 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 so, this is the myth that I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to make a pun, but on a very serious note, I just wanted to know what are your suggestions to your students that they should not stand straight and you know, uh, about these days of loneliness. Please stay. Uh, I think in these matters we have to wait. <coughs> it's not easy. Combating evil is not an easy job. I'll give you three examples from my direct personal experience. In 1975, I was taking out a history class on a trip of Madhya Pradesh and the news came in 1977 that in the elections going on to be held, uh, Jagjivan Ram had joined the opposition. We all in the
bus, the entire presidency lot. Wanted from the bottom of their heart for the emergency to end. And this was immediately fulfilled. So we got plenty of charge and satisfaction out of this. Now this was premature. The second example would be the 1992 experience. Uh, it took some years for the BJP to take over and we did not understand this. We criticized the UPA government without understanding the implications. And the third example, look at Modi's coming to power and I don't think we are going to get out of this soon, at least not in my lifetime. I don't expect to see the end of this murder of emergency. But you will see a number of years lie ahead. It will not be easy. messages and everything. So what as a people of education or as a people of uh, as students, as teachers, as academics, how can we at least speak out or convey the right form of information to the people so that they do not become bluntly violent and start being aggressive and just start segregating not only themselves on the basis of religion but also on the basis of class, caste class and everything else. This is my question. Look, this is a political struggle and writing to the media or speaking on the media probably will not do the trick. You have to appeal to a deeper level of the emotional makeup of the individual. Now, there is absolutely no doubt that Modi is a false person. I mean, the Rajivari guy he adopted for some time soon went off. The bathroom clean, cleaning, slush bar, uh, that also went by the board. The Netaji Shubhash statue in a big spot of Delhi, that is also now deserted and he has got the Swarna Dandanda, the Chola uh, Rajdanda. 
into parliament and he is grabbing. He, he is not self-confident. Now these matters, do you think people don't understand? They understand. They look for advantages. But there may come a time when the emotion will take over from the calculation of advantage and become stronger. This will take time. In the meanwhile you can go on writing and speaking and speaking to small groups, not just big media. Thank you all for your questions. I would now like to invite my colleague. Thank you for your questions. I would now like to invite my colleague Riti Bhattacharjo to present felicitations to Professor Roy as a token of gratitude for his presence here today. stand here before you to express our sincere thanks on behalf of the History Department for gracing us with your presence at this enlightening seminar about Hindutva and the idea of India. Our hearts are filled today with appreciation for your participation and your active engagement in this thought-provoking talk given by none other than Professor Raju Kantaroy. On behalf of the Department, I extend my heartfelt gratitude to Professor Rai for his eloquent discourse that guided us through the complex interplay between ideology, history and the crucial role played by identity. The success of this seminar would not have been possible without the collaborative efforts of many individuals. On the behalf of the seminar committee, I present our sincere gratitude to our respective faculty members who meticulously organized and coordinated this event. We would like to express our gratitude to all the participants who actively engaged in this discussion and asked questions that added depth to the seminar and made it a truly interactive experience. We would also like to convey our heartfelt appreciation to Shrimati Onuradha Loya, Arun Kumar Maiti and Shoravda for the sound system. Last but certainly not least, our heartfelt appreciation goes to Professor Rajat Kanto Roy for his invaluable presence and enlightening discourse that he shared with us. Your profound knowledge, eloquence and passion for history have left an indelible impression on all of us. In closing this seminar, I would like to extend our sincerest thanks to everybody who played a role in making this seminar a resounding success. Let us carry forward the knowledge and inspiration gained from this event as we continue our academic journey in the fascinating realm of history. Finally, I would like to apologize for all the technical issues. I hope it wasn't a huge influence. Thank you.